This video has been sponsored by Diodica.com. Good morning, fellow mathematicians, bunch of people watching some weird nerd guy doing maths and physics. <laughs> Back at analytical mechanics today, and as you might notice, we have a given potential and we want to work with it today. It's an old exercise from my theoretical physics classroom. We are going to play around with it a little bit. I really like this exercise, it's nice. Okay, so we have a potential defined, and let's see what we get. So, if x is greater than zero, strictly greater than zero, then our potential can be constructed out of some f0 times x. Well, you might notice f0 is just constant, it's not in terms of x, that means we have some linear equation, that's nice, that's easy to work with. Also, if x is less than zero, our potential explodes to infinity. What does that mean? Well, we have an infinitely high potential barrier and our little particle can pass through it. Not in classical mechanics, in quantum mechanics, it can. Weird things happen in the quantum domain. And also, if x is equal to zero, well, we have instantaneous reflection. That means if it reaches this point, our velocity will get a different sign and our particle will jump back. So let's draw a little graph and see what we have. So we have u in terms of x and we also have x. Well, we have our potential right here. This is our graph, it's linear, just like we said before. And also we have this infinitely high potential barrier where our particle can pass through. Let's imagine we have a marble down here and it's rolling down. Once it reaches this point right here, x equals to zero, it will change its velocity with a negative sign and will roll back up, up to our energy level. For example, E1, that's just what's going to happen. Well, don't forget, we have some classical turning points, at least one this time. This right here isn't really a classical turning point. It's not continuous down here. So we have some x1, or let's just call it x0 in this case for the maximum x value. Well, at a classical turning point, our velocity is going to be zero. That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> so just like with a pendulum, we have this equilibrium position right here. It will lose all its velocity and then it's going to um, fly back to another, pos to another position. So that's what happens here. And well, what else can we do? Without any restrictions, we are going to assume that this right here is a conservative force. And there was a connection between conservative forces and potentials, which says that some force f in terms of x is nothing else than a negative derivative in terms of x of u in terms of x. Well, taking the negative differential of this right here is quite easy. We end up with negative f0. But we also know what a force is. A force is nothing else than mass times acceleration. Okay, great. So we found that out. And also we can divide both sides by the mass because it's not equal to zero. There wouldn't be any force otherwise. <laughs> and well, we now have a differential equation, x double dot equals to negative f naught over m. And it's quite easy solving this differential equation. We just have to integrate it two times and then we are done. So let's integrate it the first time, but in terms of time, not in terms of x. Integrating it in terms of time. So we now know that the first integration step will give us the velocity x dot. Well, now we have to integrate this right here in terms of time. Well, this is just going to be minus f0 over m times t. But we don't have an upper and lower bound, that means we get a constant. Let's do, them, uh, let's do some dimensional analysis. Blah, English is hard. <laughs> um, this right here on this side is a velocity. So that means we also need a velocity on this side. We are going to call it v0, for example. The velocity at the point t equals to zero. And now let's integrate this chunk a second time. So that means we end up with the solution to our differential equation, x in terms of t. Well, this integrated is just f0 over 2m, t squared plus v0 times t plus some constant um, x0, for example. Dimensional analysis, we have to get something that has to do with meters, inches whatsoever on this side. Now we have found an analytical expression. That's nice and fine. Can we do anything else? Well, remember my old video I made about potential graphs, face portraits and stuff like this? We can also draw a face portrait of this stuff right here. Okay, let's do this real quick. 
remember what a phase portrait is. So just that you can get a feeling for position and velocity in relationship. So we have x dot up here and we have x down here. Like I said before, the velocity is going to be zero at the classical turning point, x1. And also, x is going to be zero down here, but we are going to have the highest velocity possible. On the one hand, we have some positive velocity, um, x dot one, for example. But on the other hand, we have this instantaneous reflection, so it will change the sign. That means we have some other maximum velocity down here, x2, x dot two. And the thing is, we are going to end up with a graph like this. So it's supposed to go to, uh, through x1 right here. I can't draw too well. The thing is, our marble is going, uh, is going to roll up and up and up and up and up until it reaches this classical turning point. Then it's going to roll down, 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 until it reaches this point of instantaneous reflection. And then it jumps from here to here in an instant. So that's what happens. It's not continuous, like I said before. It's just going to happen. So you could also say that there's an arrow going up here instantaneously. Well, and this is just for the energy level E1. What would happen if we would have another energy level E2, for example? Well, we would end up with a graph like this, and then with another one, and another one for a whole bunch of different energies. The last exercise here was to find an expression for the period time in terms of the energy. So at first let us construct the energies once again. So we know that some energy is nothing else than the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Well, kinetic energy is just m over 2 times x dot squared and also plus our potential f naught times x. And like I said before, we have a classical turning point. And at this classical turning point, our velocity is zero. So that means for x dot equals to zero, we would end up with um, e is equal to f naught times x naught. Nice and fine. So we can divide both sides by f naught, not equal to zero. So that also means that our maximum um, point on this graph x0, classical turning point, is E over F0. And now we want to solve this differential equation right here. We have done this before, it's nearly the same procedure. So what we need to do, we need to subtract this, multiply both sides by 2 over m because it's not equal to 0, and take the square root. We are just going to take a look at the positive branch. So after some playing around, we know that x and dot is nothing else than dx dt, and what is that? Well, this is 2 over m, but the square root of this whole thing. And we have e minus f naught times x. Great. Next, <laughs> we want to divide both sides by this right here, not equal to 0, and multiply both sides by dt and see what we get. Just acting like those are some operators, and we can shift them around. So we also know that dx over square root 2 over m e minus f naught x is indeed equal to dt. And now we want to find an expression for the period time. What is the period time? Remember guys, it's the time it takes from this classical turning point to down here to the classical turning point once again. But it doesn't quite work if we just take the integral from x0 to x0, that's just zero. That would be quite stupid. So how about we just take half a period time? So from x0 to zero in this case. So at first, we have the time from x of zero to, um, no, from t of zero in this case, sorry. Uh, we have to have a time here to t of x0. Well, we know this is half the period time. That's an equivalence relation. That means we also need to integrate on this side. And just like I said before, integrating from zero or x naught whatsoever to x naught. You could also integrate from x naught to zero, whatever you prefer. Okay, and that's quite easy to integrate. So at first we can take this one over square root two over m to the outside, take the reciprocal, and we can multiply both sides by two and we have an expression for the period time at first. So we know the period time in terms of the energy is nothing else. So this is now square root 2 times m 
times the integral from 0 to x0 of. So we have dx over square root. One little step I want to do is I want to factor out the f0. You will see in a second why I'm doing this. So factoring out the f0 leaves us with e over f0 minus x. Why am I doing this? Well, at first we can bring this one over square root f0 to the outside. So that's nice and handy. And also e over f0 is nothing else than x0. So that's quite nice. So at first we have square root 2 times m over f0 times the integral from 0 to x0 of dx over, and now we have the square root, x0 minus x. And this is really easy to solve because we can introduce a u substitution. So let's sum u equal to x0 minus x. Well, that also means that du is nothing else than minus dx. We can plug this in. t in terms of e is now square root 2m over f0. And now we have an integral from. If we plug in 0 into here, we are integrating from x0 to, if we plug in x0 into here, that's just 0, so that's nice. And we also have, um, yeah, now we have 1 over the square root of u in this case, which is just u to the minus 1 half power. And we also have minus du. We can basically distribute this minus into here and change the order of integration. Let's do this. So we now have the integral from 0 to x0, getting rid of this integral sign. And integrating this is really easy. We are going to add a 1 to the exponent and we are going to get a factor of 2 right here. So we now have the square root of 2 times m over f0, 2 times, and now we have u to the 1 half power from 0 to x0. And well, this thing in terms of 0 is just going to be 0 and this u in terms of x0 is just x0, square root of x0. And now we can bring all this stuff together and see what we get. Um, do I have a lot of space here? No, not really, but I'm going to put it here. Let's try it out. So we now have the square root of. We can bring this 2 in here. 2 is just square root of 4. So we have square root of 8m over, okay, so we have the square root of x0. Let's bring it to the inside. So we also have an x0 up here over f0. Okay, that's our period time. But we wanted to put it in terms of E, in terms of the energy. Well, x0 is just energy over force. So we can plug this in. So we know that we have the square root of A times M times E over f0 but squared. And this is indeed an expression for the period time in terms of the energy. And then we are done. <laughs> what you could do, you could also solve this analytical expression in terms of some initial conditions. It also works, but I think that this way right here is way more aesthetic. You should do it that way because you are a flammable boy. I do hope so that you are. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, take a look into the description. There will be a link to my Patreon. I'm doing all this stuff for free, so I would appreciate some support from you guys. And up until the next video, have a flammable physical mathematical day. See ya. I gotta annoy you guys a little bit. Like I said in the beginning, this video has been sponsored by diodica.com. So if you want to get some great lasers for cheap prices, check them out. Link will be in the description. And if you use my promo code, Papa Fleming, <laughs> then you will also get free shipping on your whole order. So that's quite a nice deal. You should make use of it. Just take a look on the website. They are a great team of great people. Really nice people. See ya.